turn my lights off. This is scary. Uh, next boat video. I don't know if it's scary though. I pause one time, 50 gifted, locked. There's something about lost media that's so incredibly unsettling. The idea of a piece of recorded history being effectively lost to time, cementing even the most mundane footage, TV shows, and even video games into the realm of mystery. It seems that each and every day, Ew. new relics of decades past are being remembered, spreading like wildfire to all the others who also vaguely remember it too. A year ago, I brought you through five of the darkest pieces of lost media that I could find. However, it was but a drop in the ocean of what's actually out there. There are hundreds, thousands of disturbing pieces of forgotten media, all with their own stories, their own significance, and their own intricate details that cement them as some of the darkest in existence. Tonight, you and I are diving back in. If you can't handle this, you this is this real is the darkest wake up, wake oh. What a way, so is we What a way It's the 31st of May, 2013, and the town of El Reno, Oklahoma is silent. It's a Friday like any other, except for a small problem. They're in Oklahoma? Oh my God. National Weather Service in Norman has issued a tornado warning for southwestern Oklahoma County in central Oklahoma, southeastern Canadian County in central Oklahoma, until 7 p.m. Central Daylight Time. At 6.23 p.m. Central Daylight Time, National Weather Service. As the early evening approaches, alerts ring in about a potential multiple vortex tornado that may touch down in the area. It's we something do, we meteorologists some haven't seen before. If the chat gets too it's unprecedented, uh, just whenever they want it, it's so different. It's cool right now. They pay chilling. Dubois at 6:03 p.m., an EF3 monster touches down around they're eight chilling, miles southeast of El Reno, Oklahoma. Rapidly, it swells in size, becoming more violent by the minute. Yo, Chaska, relax. Yo, Chaska, look gang, relax. Look gang. Good thing for the neighboring it's towns and sub, cities. Oh, However, no need for those with a passion Chaska. for chasing supercells like this, <laughs> I'm gonna give the you a sub. was far more disastrous. In the mid-2000s, a team of storm chasers going by the alias Twist X was formed under the Discovery Channel, yeah. headed by a man named Tim Samaras. Like it involved a group of 10 scientists with the goal of chasing and documenting the dynamics of various superstorms, utilizing numerous vehicles outfitted with weather probes. 
If you're a fan of the show Storm Chasers, then you've likely seen them in action, as they were heavily involved in seasons three through five around the turn of the decade. On the night of the El Reno tornado, Tim Samaras, along with two other members, a videographer named Paul Samaras and a meteorologist named Carl Young were dispatched in one of the crew's Chevrolet Cobalts with the goal of I'm deploying go the a weather drone it in hopes of capturing video, right. atmospheric and seismic data. So Ironically, now, so being considered one of the safest storm chasers in the industry, Samaras was up for the task. And so, the he and his crew decided to pursue the El Reno me. tornado, unaware of just how volatile it would soon become. I never heard about this. Wow, can you see that on the camera? Yeah. That's crazy. Come on. Everybody, you want to go after you guys? Shit is so ass. Oh my fucking god. Oh god, I just go to sleep. It's over. I'm I'm just going to sleep. Take a nap, bro. This shit should be gone. I lonesome. Thank you for the two months. As the minutes pass, the vortex rapidly changes direction. It ramps up speed and it grows to a size never before seen. At its widest, it attains a diameter of 2.6 miles, cementing it as the single largest tornado by surface area ever recorded. Yo, boss, man, Regardless, the, the TwistX team approaches it with their plan of deploying that weather drone before getting out of there as fast as your possible. Desk when you breathe out of your nose. They begin what their the drive towards the highway to in hopes Yo, of heading south towards its direction. However, to bitch. their surprise, the tornado rapidly and unexpectedly turns straight towards them. <laughs> Really in the following dude. minutes, they do everything they can to turn around, to get away hey, from oh this God, beast of nature. Hey, oh God, if I was a my power is if However, I sneeze, I could cause a tornado, y'all will be fucked. Oh my God, chat, I swear to God. Any man. nigga who talk about my nose, oh God, your house is getting blown down, bitch. Helpless inside. Big bad wolf, swear to God. My Lord and Savior. As the cars picked up, Carl and Paul are ejected from the vehicle, while Tim remains trapped inside. <laughs> <Not loud. laughs> and with nowhere to turn during this entire ordeal, all three of them tragically lose their lives. Damn. Rest in peace. Niggas in chat is so weird. That condones putting his drool in emoji. Not worse than a submarine. What are you saying? Like, niggas literally paid to go on a submarine. You think niggas paid Two for days a tornado? Later and half a mile away, the bodies of Paul and Carl are found. And not far from them, their vehicle with Tim still inside. Rest in peace to all souls lost, After but I'm not search, going on no fucking Authorities submarine find their belongings spread the throughout a nearby bro, creek bed, like, one of which being a camera belonging to Carl. Remarkably, it was still in working condition, and recorded onto it were the final moments of everyone in that vehicle. To this day, only a very select handful of people have been given access to this video, one of which being the crew's close friend named Gabe Garfield. Since the incident, He's gone on record to state that while viewing it, he could hear Carl describe how, quote, eerily calm the air became around them in the moments prior to their death. Immediately after, Tim Samaras retorts, actually, I think we're in a bad spot. Before his final words, we're going to die, echo over and over through their radio. Fuck. As far as it's known, this footage has never been released publicly nor are there any plans to. Interestingly though, on YouTube, we're able to find a second-hand view of the TwistX team in the moments before the incident. Holy shit, However, this is scary. as the worst of the storm approaches, they rapidly disappear in the distance as shit the El Reno tornado out. engulfs them. I swear to God. 
this is my worst fear while driving, bro. It's been some moments where it's been raining in Atlanta where I thought I was going to die, nigga. I swear to God. So this shit is, like, this shit is not even, like, this is past that, bro. Fucking highways get so flooded. The headlights of this vehicle allegedly belong to it when it twists. Like, fuck! In the following clips, you'll realize how treacherous the conditions were and how close Dan himself came from tragedy. That shit just fucked my head up. Wow. Nasty, thank to you for this day, much. this snippet is the last remaining public footage of their team and carries a haunting legacy of just how dangerous the profession of storm chasing can really be. The demise of the Twistex team was caused by a phenomenon entirely unexpected. What began as just another day chasing just another storm had devolved into one of the Andrew, most nightmarish so scenarios one could ever find themselves in. And whether or not this footage ever sees the light of day, it's irrefutably tragic that multiple families were broken apart that night by this unstoppable behemoth of nature. This what that's what it must feel like being hit with the rasnet gun. Prada, please shut your geek. What the what the fuck is a rasnet gun? Bitch, that's a tornado. What are you talking? All these anime motherfuckers, bro. Always talking about some anime bullshit. What the fuck is a rasnet gun? <laughs> what the fuck? Rasnet rasnet. Razgun. Hello everyone, Ray quick gun. thing, Ray, up, today's bro. video is actually sponsored by the lovely people <laughs> over <laughs> at Incognito. <laughs> Hundreds of thousands of retirees have had their personal information leaked after a massive <laughs> data breach. American Airlines and Southwest say they've notified more than 8,000 people who applied to become a pilot after a data breach to me. In the modern work out of nation that offer of Rasenga. 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 Thank you for the abbreviations, Chad, and all the help breaking it down. What anime that's from? Naruto. Never watched that fully through. Never watched it at all, to be honest with you. Only played the video games. On the evening of March 9th, 2001, in the small village of Rottenburg, Germany, a man lies deceased in a bathtub. Yo! He's been here for three really hours I'll be and is lying in a pool of his own blood. His reproductive organs are gone. His throat is wide open. Bruh. And needless to say, this scene is absolutely revolting. Bouncy, thank you for the two months.
Nigga said TOS. Bro, shut your bitch ass up. <laughs> shut your bitch ass up. <laughs> Appealing to some of the most depraved types of people out there were a myriad of websites centering on very specific fetishes and interests. And the one that rose to mainstream prominence during the early 2000s was named none other than Cannibal Whoa, Cafe. Oh no! Stop! Stop! It this is my biggest fear. Stop! Well, can't stop, bro. No, I can't watch this, bro. Stop! No, 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 no. <laughs> nah. I don't fuck with. I don't fuck with the people that eat people, bro. Like that shit is real, dude. I I dri I've driven through like Alabama and shit, chat. And I feel like it's a lot of them that reside there. Cannibals. Those who legitimately desired to consume other human beings. And what festered here was a cesspool of pedophilia and vororophilia that went unchecked for years. Of course, the website oh, staunchly claims no, no, that everything cannibals. posted here is all fantasy. Family. But I learned is how to it say really? That shit and everything. In early 2001, a man going by nothing more than Frankie makes numerous posts to the Cannibal Cafe. He's searching for what he calls a young slaughter boy and has a peculiar request. I'm searching for a young boy between 18 and 25 years old. If you have a normal body, I'll butcher you and eat your flesh. What? Yo, no, 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 no. It was a dude that- It was a disturbingly bro, simple- It was a whole other man inquiry. that used to do this shit in and somewhere- And this sat here. Japan floating in the vast ocean that is the internet eat people for day boy i thought my shit died i thought my headset just died what the fuck as frankie's post garnered slivers of attention willing volunteers trickled in when it really came down to it though, all of them ended up backing out. But there was one Ugh, what the f that didn't. Oh my God. A computer engineer named Bernd Brandis expresses to Frankie that he has a very specific fetish. It isn't for consuming others, but for the exact opposite. He wants to be consumed and he wants Frankie to be the one to do it to him. Over the next few days, the two exchange contact information by email. And it's here where Brandis learns that the name Frankie is nothing but an alias. This man's real name is Armin Mivis, and he's ready to meet as soon as possible. Peace is already on the desk, buddy. <laughs> just gotta just gotta lock the door for extra protection. Feel me? It's the night of March 9th, and Brandis is on his way to Armin's home. It's unclear what exactly is on his mind, and if he even knows what's coming. However, after arriving at his residence, Brandis opens with an interesting request. This house looks so fucking creepy, bro. He wants to have his reproductive appendage bit off and eaten. What? And so, complying, Mivis gives his wish a try, however, is unsuccessful due to its chewiness. Resultingly, he cuts it off and throws it in a frying pan with various marinades and seasonings. Oh my However, god, he's after a all of it, ends no. up burning it to the point Literally. where it's entirely inedible. Literally. 
Growing weak and losing blood, Mivas escorts him to his bathroom and over the next Bro, few minutes, oh my God, places no, him inside the tub, feeds him a cocktail of painkillers and alcohol, oh, no. slits his throat and kisses him on the forehead as the life of Burn Brandis fades before his eyes. Three hours, no. Brandis sits here as Mibus reads a Star Trek novel to pass the time. And bafflingly, during this entire fiasco, not a single thing was done without anyone's consent. Oh my god, oh my god, Chad, I just saw him at the throw up, y'all. Uh. Niggas don't get it, bro. Niggas don't get it until they run into a person that's just like that. Fuck. Over the next few days, Armin oh, Midas is dismembers like Burn Brandis, storing his remains in his <laughs> deep sad. freezer with nothing more than some frozen pizzas and a dead rat. Meanwhile, Every single thing he's doing and has done to him is being filmed by a camera he's had on hand the entire time. All of it is documented and all of it immortalized onto one single VHS tape. Over the next 10 months, Armin consumes over 44 pounds of burnt Brandis's flesh, Yo! taking out and cooking his body parts whenever he desired them. With this, he takes to the Cannibal Cafe to boast in explicit detail about his actions. However, it's here where Armin finally finds himself on the receiving end of trouble. Dude. By December of 2002, another member of the Cannibal Cafe reports numerous explicitly detailed uh, posts the by Frankie to authorities he was in prompting Germany. a raid of his home. There, police discover numerous body parts in a single four-hour videotape depicting the murder and dismemberment of Burnt Brandis. Oh, he didn't get away with it. Oh, because shit. Because of their discovery, Armin Mivis was immediately apprehended. However, his charges were some that authorities had no specific laws on prosecuting. Burnt Brandis, throughout this entire ordeal, was willing, which only brought considerable confusion and media attention to this case. Like, Nevertheless, go. Armin Mivas ended up with a conviction of murder and claimed that he'd done it out of sexual dead. gratification. Today, he remains incarcerated in Frankfurt, uh, Germany and will, for the Ew. rest of his life, remain behind bars. Fucking sick ass bitch. Ugh. That nigga seizing some dick. That boy put some lorries on that dick. Ugh. Mm-mm. The tape that Armin filmed during his night with Bern Brandis has never seen the light of day outside the courtroom during his trial. Considered to be too gruesome to show to the general public, the world is left to speculate on its contents, filling in the blanks from the official story given during his testimony. To be honest, I don't quite know how to feel about this entire dilemma as Bern Brandis wanted all of this. He wasn't murdered against his will, but he was still murdered. Nevertheless, Armin Mivas is a depraved man, a man who created a situation that never should have happened. And because of his actions on that fateful night, one of the darkest lost media cases out there, needlessly, was born. That is crazy, bro. The, can the cannibal... The, the the C Cafe form. Fuck out of here, bro. I'm not finna even say that word. That's bad energy. Oh my daddy. Shit like this made me bite my nails, and I don't even bite my nails.
Parker, thank you for the sub. I appreciate you. It's late at night, and 18-year-old Kathleen Allen and her boyfriend Michael Carroll are spending time in a motel room in which they're living. Oh, thank you for the two months. 1985. On this year. day, nothing is awry, and to some, could even be considered painstakingly ordinary. At 10 p.m., Michael vaguely claims that he has to go do something and leaves after assuring her that he'd return in the morning. And so, Kathleen goes to bed. And her night comes to an end. It's morning, and Michael Carroll is nowhere to be found. Regardless, Kathleen doesn't think too much of it and goes about her life and work as usual. Three days later, while at work, however, she receives a... Just thinking about bending them and big he knows where Michael's located. He claims that he was involved in a shooting and wouldn't be coming home. Shocked, Kathleen informs her boss that she needs to leave. And given the circumstances, she's given permission to do so. A few moments later, she's seen running out into the parking lot where a bearded man approaches her. The two reportedly engage in conversation before she ends up jumping in his car. Soon after, the, the man joins her in the vehicle, and it speeds off, never to be seen again. This is the last time that Kathleen Allen was ever seen in public. God damn it. Bro, why do alive. people go to foresty ass places? Like, that's not a word, but you know what I mean. Why do people live in Atlanta? <laughs> Why do people keep fucking moving here? Can y'all stay in Florida? Holy shit. You niggas cannot drive, bro. Oh, God. Damn. The fuck is this? Is this shit real? Yo, this nigga got some good ass, great ass cinematics. On October 29th, 1945, a man named Leonard Lake was born in San Francisco, California. Being regarded a bright kid, his early years were relatively unsuspecting. When he turned six years old, however, his parents had separated, to which Lake and his siblings would move in with their grandmother. Bizarrely, Lake began to exhibit disturbing habits on numerous occasions he was caught photographing his sister's nude he'd collect mice and dissolve them in chemicals and he'd extort his siblings into performing sexual acts all of which was condoned by his grandmother with not a single shred of effort to put a stop to it oh you old bitch needless to say lake hailed from a broken home something that only catalyzed his morbid fascinations however because they were left unchecked and often encouraged, Leonard Lake's life would only spiral further and further as time began to overtake him.
god. Something that can By the actually turn of the happen. And throughout adulthood, <laughs> Leonard Lake became heavily invested Yo. in survivalism, a movement focused on preparing for severe emergencies. Jesus. Notably, Lake had an undying fear of a nuclear holocaust, and on numerous occasions, attempted to build safety bunkers at his residences, to varying success. In 1981, he put out an advertisement for a survivalist partner in a war game magazine in hopes of meeting someone to live with him for honestly god knows why the reason this is important is because this single page this one advertisement had led lake to meet one of the most vile people in existence exacerbating lake's pre-existing morbid fantasies and leading to his status as one of the most disgusting and disturbing monsters ever to exist the man's name was charles ing a native of hong kong and a convict who was in and out of prison Almost immediately, the pair hit it off, collaborating in numerous crimes like firearm theft that eventually led to their arrest and a brief stint in prison. After their release, the two settled down in a wooded town named Wilseyville, and it was here where Lake enlisted the Fuck help of various residents to build yet another wow, bunker wow, right place. next to his cabin. Inside, he'd begin stockpiling illegal weapons. However, alongside them was something that didn't exactly belong. It was equipment okay. to record video. Bro. Who the fuck would sign up for some shit like that? This nigga vlogging. Yo. Good evening. Thank you for the sub. Give the sub, CH. It's a Sunday on October 22nd, 23rd, something like that. Very close to my 38th birthday. And I'm starting this tape without script or without any real organization of what I want to say. This tape, what you're hearing now, is going to be the lead-in of the various phases of construction of a building which hopefully will be the first of a series of underground buildings. The main emphasis of the building, the whole justification for its expense and its effort, will be a hidden portion of it, a secret. Yo, room, this nigga is secret chatting, secret. bro. More co but more consistent vlogger than you. How will make you eat those words? The cell. <laughs> Fuck the jail this cell, if you will. Yo, is that jacket baked though? And the purpose of that cell and the main purpose, hence of the building. Is it actually? Will be. Hey, Dio Brando, thank you for the fucking resub. Squiz, my boy, thank you for the uh, resub. Juice, thank you for the resub. Who probably at this moment is unknown to me. That shit look like what Nigo Air, baby. I ain't gonna lie. An off the shelf. I fuck, with the, I fuck with the fit, but I don't fuck with him. I want to be able to use a woman whenever. And however I want. All right, I don't fuck with the fit no more. And when I'm tired or satiated or bored or not interested, I simply want to put her away, lock her up in a little room, get her out of my sight, out of my life. The advantages of such a situation are, of course, obvious and even beyond sexual. Such a woman, totally enslaved, um, would be useful for the mundane chores that I. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I'm just like buying his video, bro. Somebody get the link. Doing. Clean house, washing dishes. They all fucking vlog, bro. Niggas chatting, bro. Um, slave. Bitch There's ass no nigga. Shut up. Primarily a sexual slave, but not a lot of Weirdo. Well. Weirdo. For Monday, February 15th. Hi, I'm Kyle Kraska. It's being called the creepiest crime scene in America, a remote cabin where cops say some of the most gruesome serial killings in California history took place. Well, now Ed Miller's giving you an exclusive and very disturbing look inside this house of horrors. First, they were kidnapped, then robbed. Twelve innocent victims. Jesus! 
The real reason for his bunker wasn't solely for survivalism. That was merely a piece of it. You see, Lake and Ng had this morbid obsession with capturing. Lake claimed that he needed them to serve him after the impending nuclear holocaust and frequently went on record to demean the existence of women entirely. And so, for years, Lake and Ng would capture, torture, inside this bunker, all the while documenting it on his myriad of VHS Yo, cameras dude. installed inside each room. The woman we saw at the beginning of this segment wasn't just someone random. Because it was Kathleen Allen. The woman who left her job because of the news would, of her boyfriend's how death. Does someone's brain the even woman think who it is? entered the car of a stranger and was bro, never the seen again. Who do shit like this is just the this woman bird, who bro. fell right into the grasp. Not gonna lie. That's what I've come to the conclusion. Lake. Of. While the pair's main target were a women, lot of niggas they mama wouldn't hold smoke back on abducting their relatives. <laughs> Often, like, the pair would coerce think about men that. into that coming out of their big, bunker in hopes of work key. before they'd rob them, strangle them, and steal their identities. Like, no Thereafter, way. they'd manipulate their families Spares, into bro. coming to their property, much like they did with Kathleen, to which they'd lock them up in Lake's dungeon and leave them with an ultimatum. They can either serve Lake and Ng unapologetically, obeying their every command without hesitance, or they could be killed. No matter which option they chose, though, the outcome was all the same. Their lives would be brutally torn from them, with not a single soul around to help. I think they, they turn that way. As a kid though, like definitely from a kid, when they start killing animals and shit, like how this nigga was talking about, like kid, bro. Thank you for the resource, Gummy, Ghost Wave, Labaka, Trippy, Connor. Patrick In June of 1985, Jay. police were called to a hardware store after Charles Ng was caught trying to shoplift a vice. WDEO niggas. After catching wind of the situation, Lake rushed there himself in hopes of paying for it. However, when police asked for an ID, he handed over one that looked nothing like him. It was the license for Robin Stapley, a man who turned up missing just a few weeks prior. Mm. Following this, both Ink and Lake were arrested. However, just four days later, and so while crazy. in custody, Leonard Lake would swallow cyanide pills, effectively ending his own life. Oh my god, no fucking way this nigga was carrying pills. Upon searching that Lake's property, authorities discovered multiple vehicles belonging to their numerous victims, along with a makeshift burial site near their compound. He's so they unearthed 40 pounds of crushed human bone fragments coming from what they believed to be the remains of at least 11 bodies. Inside the bunker, they find a treasure map leading to two buckets containing various IDs and personal belongings, and a myriad of VHS tapes depicting the torture and murder of their victims. To say that their discovery was grim is a criminal understatement, as the breadth of their crimes simply cannot be summarized in writing. The scene, surreal, oh. and the content on those VHS tapes, indescribably worse. Firing squad. Today, Charles Ng is still alive, serving his life sentence in the San Quentin State Prison. Given his court verdict, being 12 counts of first degree murder, it's undeniable that this man will never again see the light of day. The crimes that he and Leonard Lake committed are some of the worst in history, and the fact that they videotaped it adds that extra layer of repulsion. See, to this day, well, the tapes the, uh, filmed uh, by Charles Ng and Leonard Lake are sealed away, with no plans to ever be released. That is However, fucking ridiculous, considering the dude. content presumed to be on them, it's safe to say that some things are better off lost. Not gonna lie, bro. Definitely. Some of the shit that you see as a detective, bro. Jesus. Feel bad for the people who had to watch that shit. Give them to the cartel. No, for real. Type four. I was about 15. 
Please just stay up on the left room listening to the radio on a boombox with an integrated tape recorder. I'm not even came across this. I think this was the beginning of the podcast. I caught a lot of it. Right at the end, the announcer says that the station I was tuned to was WKCR 89.9 New York. There are a bunch of names and dates in there. But I've never run into anything else like this. Sizes, thank you, bro. What's good, Aiden Zaborda Kid? How you doing, bro? You good? Oh, Chad, I can't wait to IRL. I'm so tired of sitting behind the desk. I get jitters now. It's coming. It's coming so soon. Loss. I can't wait for y'all to see the art. Y'all gotta gas it. Yo, CH, thank you, bro. Thank you for the gift. This shit getting creepy, bro. How soon? Like, rollout starting in a week and a half soon. The creepy pasta. Or not even a week and a half. A relic like a of week. a bygone era in internet history. The induction for many of us to online horror. Mouse, Ben Drowned, Slenderman, and Sad Satan are among some of the most notorious online horror stories in existence. However, to this day, one refuses to die. Yo, stop. 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 It's called Jeff the Killer, and by this point, he needs no introduction. The story today My ears, hasn't bro. exactly PTSD. aged very well. And to be honest, it kind of sounds like a Joker fan fiction, and it isn't very scary. But that's okay, because it wasn't exactly written for our time. I thought he was going to air rape me. Now, Jeff the Killer is certainly a tale that's past its time, yet it stands as somewhat of a cornerstone of this. online history. What is this? Contrary to all the effort put into the story, however, it's safe to say that the uncanniness of the image accompanying it was the major catalyst for its popularity online. All across the early 2010s, the image was shared like wildfire, though what most were unaware of was that it had coincidentally found itself caught in a web of both controversy and enduring Yo. mystery. And it was all based around I've seen one it, but I never heard of this simple story. question. I thought this shit was edited. Oh my God, amazing question. Who? Tell me. The story as we know it was written by an author on the creepypasta wiki named Gamefield2000, in which its earliest known date of publication is November 21st of 2011. Curiously though, an online user going by the persona Sesswar had come forth shortly after its online explosion, Anime claiming profile that, pick in reality, in. they are Jeff's creator. It's a bold claim, yet this should be relatively easy to prove. On October 3rd, 2008, a video was shared to a YouTube channel called Killer Jeff, an alias that Sesswar claims ownership of. The video is more or less a slideshow and drops bits of Jeff the Killer lore over pictures of various characters from his story. Interestingly, this upload was accompanied by a story on Newgrounds where the same user made a post on August 10th of that same year. The story of old Jeffy he enjoys horror such as ghost stories or slasher films. Yo, it's Have still niggas like person? this around today, bro. It's made if not other worse. Call bizarre. That's the scary part it's about like this a shit. Bloody Mary game, except you must perform it in the closet, turn off all the lights, and
and sit down cross-legged while repeating this saying three times while turning your head back and forth. He's in here with me. Chat, this room's kicking in, After the saying, close your eyes and call out the name Jeff. He'll appear by putting his face right up to you and proceed to yell and try to chant harm at you. To make him stomp is to stand there and compliment him, and not doing so will result in a nightmarish field trip. Okay, so there we have it. Seswar is the creator of Jeff the Killer, as they bear proof of the earliest rendition of utilizing both his name and image. <laughs> Yo, I ain't gonna lie, I would've With had a this panic in mind, attack about looking Surely, at that shit, they bro. should have that picture unedited. Right? Can do some crack. Shift freaking me out, so I keep making jokes. Sorry. Holy in December shit. of 2015, fellow creator Scare Theater got in contact with Seswar. He asked them a plethora of questions like, What inspired you? Why do you call him Jeff? And did you ever expect him to become so well known? All granting thought provoking insight into the creator of this online behemoth. Interestingly, though, in one of them, Scare Theater presses Seswar about the origins of the Jeff image, to which they respond, stating, the picture was made using a white latex mask and some big plastic eyes with red rubber substance that simulated blinking. There was also a black ring around the eyes that were on, covering the exposed red eyelid. After it was made, two or three photos were taken and posted, and the rest is history. Well, just like that, mystery solved. Seswar crafted something that scared millions online and did it with none other than a latex mask and some fake eyes. So good on them. I guess. What is that site? What is that? That Reddit? <laughs> Shortly after Seswar's interview, a video was found on a YouTube channel called Dark Knight. It was uploaded on the 2nd of August, 2007, what and is titled NNN Special Broadcast. Purportedly, it's based upon a Japanese urban legend surrounding a scrolling list of names at around 3 in the morning, when no one should be watching. The list is said to be accompanied by horrific imagery and bizarre sounds, before, at the very end, it states that these names are tomorrow's sacrifice. It's definitely some local 58 stuff if I've ever seen it, but that notion isn't the reason we're here tonight. You see, at the very end of this video, Dark Knight sneaks in a small surprise, turning everything we thought we knew about Jeff the Killer on its head. Ouch! It was here when it was realized that Seswar was a fraud. Oh my he god. Lied when everyone was taking his word at face value. Not only that, Jeff the Killer's image likely didn't even originate from our side of the world, as evidence from an unsuspecting website began to surface in the coming months. What the fuck? Yo, do they still got that limit on Twitter? They need to put that on every website, bruh. Fuck Where it. did this image come from? And what did the Fuck original it. version even look like? It's still if on there. Jeff the Killer were hidden within this video, unknown to the entire world, just sitting here since 2007, waiting to be found, there yeah, was bound to be it. more about him out there. This is wicked. This is By 2018, wicked. investigators made their way to a now defunct Japanese message board named Pia.cc. It's your run-of-the-mill website containing blog posts and online discussion. However, way back in 2005, hidden away inside an otherwise innocuous and highly obscure post, again, was him. 
Oh my this God. photo was uploaded Ew. on the 15th of November by a user named Omega Bolt. However, to this day, contact with them has been absolutely non-existent. They have seemingly fallen off the face of the earth, effectively becoming just as obscure as Jeff's origin itself. Aside from that though, this discovery was far from a dead end, as once this photo was run through an EXIF data analyzer, it was found that its file name is Pretty Face. Interesting, considering that just a few weeks later, they found him again. Oh, you ugly bitch. For the very first time, an alternate, less modified version of Jeff the Killer was uncovered, named White Powder 2. It was uploaded by a user named Mr. Moholland, and in their version, were able to make up minute details that were otherwise shrouded by Photoshop. <laughs> Ew! What the, the mouth fuck? is no longer bro, distorted. Okay, I'm not gonna laugh. The Folk facial accent behind this shit, bro. Fuck gone. that mask. And the previously foreboding eyes are replaced by an alternative. Yo, Contrary to Omega Bolt, though, Mr. Mulholland was actually tracked down and contacted Twitter? via Twitter. Oh my god! There they claimed that Dude. they saw the image before it was edited and believed that it, to their memory came from an online video of an Asian woman inside her home. Purportedly, her face was extremely pale, and lightly edited screen caps of her were passed around Japanese message boards as surprise images in the mid-2000s. They further state that they don't have the original image, believes that it no longer exists on the internet, and speculates that it may come from a TV show named Honto Niata no Roy no Video. Since this revelation, Every episode made from 1999 to 2005 have been thoroughly searched, yet a match has never been found. Bro, that's one of his victims, bro. <sighs> but there is one more, to this day, regarded as the oldest sighting of Jeff the Killer. Bro, stop saying it's something behind me, baby Dave. On the homepage of a website hey, named hey, fileman.n1e.jp, resting hey, innocuously is, is among dog? images of puppies and waifus, was version 1, captured on July 24th of 2005. The only clues that accompanied this are the caption, Fear of a Summer Night, and once clicked, a descriptor claims this photo is, quote, a celebrity before plastic surgery. What the fuck? Aside from this, My big dumb no ass. further context is given. I'm thinking this is a dead body and shit. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, we could do this all day. Because since the hunt began, there have been hundreds of sightings of Jeff the Killer uh, online, all predating Sesswar's original story. Hold Over on, the years, hold on, there have been I'm not quite ready. a handful of original image contenders that have gained I'm considerable ready, no. traction, Phone most is notably with the widespread hoax Talk involving a woman who doesn't even exist. It's safe to say that this surge has had its fair share of controversy, yet that hasn't slowed the decade-long resilience of Wait, those trying last to time investigate I did, I did this. On my... This is one of the longest-running internet mysteries of all time. Go my and if I'm being honest, it may never find a resolution. Other versions of Jeff are discovered, yet they bear more edits than version 1. Rumors circulate about a- Fucking ew! This is one of the longest-running internet Go mysteries my, of all time. It. And if I'm being honest, it may never find a resolution. Other versions of Jeff are discovered, yet they bear more edits than version 1. Rumors circulate about it being a photo in a set of three, yet no proof has ever surfaced. And almost daily, those with too much free time are creating their own version of the original Yeah, fucking fat boot. This is basically just like fat boot then. ...image, and are touting it as the real thing. Sometimes the existence of an enduring mystery brings life enduring fascination. There's something hauntingly captivating about topics that seem unsolvable, especially in the modern day. In a perfect world, the existence of the internet should mark the death of all things mysterious, as at a moment's notice, every action taking place on this earth theoretically should have some sort of readily accessible answer. I'm glad that's not the case though as Jeff the Killer has given the modern internet just that small hint of mystifying intrigue. And it's based around a question so simple, 
It's quite literally the product of someone who knows someone who knows someone who took this photo. Yet they, to this day, oh, no, wait, have hey, never hey. come forward. Maybe it's a language barrier. Perhaps they've passed away. Maybe they live under a rock and have absolutely no idea that the simple picture they took on a random day pre-2005 is now subject to one of the largest internet hunts in recent history. Regardless of where this person is, Jeff the Killer, in some capacity, has stood the test of time, and whether his identity is ever actually Bro. found, he will forever remain embedded within online conversation. Always regarded an enigmatic paradox, I ain't gonna cap. I'm a effectively fine, immortalized as one of the most recognizable, yet completely unknown internet urban legends ever to exist. I'm a fine Jeff the Killer little chopped ass, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a choke his ass out, chat. Alright, y'all don't be, y'all be believing in me, alright, bro? It's a woman, what? The woman in the field. Microsoft, why not use your connections? The people who made your PC fast and reliable with Windows now do the same for your internet connection. All right, we did this last time and we're gonna do it again here. Before we begin this next segment, I'd like to state that this next entry may be nothing at all. I could be reading way too much into it, but the following topic is something that's personally haunted me for years, even though it's relatively simple conceptually. With that being said, this section does involve heavily disturbing imagery, so if that type of thing bothers you, viewer discretion is strongly advised. Let us begin. The Internet The Internet, man. frontier that found mainstream popularity at the turn of the millennium. A seemingly endless repository of history, culture, and conversation. Throughout the years, the rise of the internet has given the world an outlet for expression, a vehicle for humor, and so a little-known phenomenon known as the meme was born. <laughs> this is not the best way to eat a cupcake. I just found this out. Take the bottom part, put it on top. Oh God, I don't see it, AA. You don't get messy. It's so wait, much wait. better. <laughs> Yo, bro. No, 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 I'm gonna dive into their cultural significance, Yo. as I'm pretty sure you're all aware of what they are. The reason I bring them up tonight, however, is because there's one out there that has stood out to me ever since I first heard about it on Reddit two and a half years ago. Now, before we continue, I want you to know that I've gone back and forth on covering this topic for years now. I've scripted this out, then scrapped it, then threw it in an iceberg I wrote, then trashed it. I don't quite know where or how this fits on my channel, if you catch my drift. But it is creepy. October 26th of 2020. I believe this popular meme is an image from a snuff film. Hopefully you guys can prove me wrong. Hello there. Please let me know if this isn't the right place to post this. I've seen this meme being posted around for quite a long time, usually with drinking related titles, as if the person lying on the grass is just blacked out drunk. 
Now, I'll never forget a video I saw on the deep web about eight years ago that showed two Russian guys messing around with the body of a woman, inserting a kitchen knife on her face and other terribly atrocious things, all while talking and laughing. Whenever I see this meme, I think of this video and after taking a good look at the picture, I believe it can actually be a frame from it. It's not there, uh, the video takes place in a very similar setting, the concrete well and the grass surrounding it. Sorry, Chad, However, it could very well be that I'm misremembering it. Uh, computer. The questions I'm left oh, with are, does anybody know about the origin of this photo? Is there anyone here who's familiar with the clip I've talked about? And if so, could this be from it? I definitely don't remember well enough to be sure whether it's the same or not. Y'all thought Jeff got me? Just what the fuck was y'all finna do? But I'm committed to never searching Man, for this kind of you. content again. I hope some of you guys can help with this. Thank you. Shout out to the days when you said you were at a sleepover, but you were actually dying in a field from alcohol poisoning. This is the image. Yeah, I don't see it. Fuck. Yeah, just fuck me, I guess. What the fuck? A year ago, I discussed a similar mystery in a segment about Corey Feldman, and within the very same day my video went public, you guys were able to dig up its source. Because of this, I've decided to quit sitting on this one, because this one photo has legitimately bothered me from the first moment one. I saw it. As we can see, we have what appears to be a person with white hair lying face down in a field of what tall grass. Thank you for the sub. They're draped in a large long sleeve shirt, dark blue jeans and boots. Their body lies in a fashion that appears limp, and this entire image is engulfed in VHS degradation, implying that it, it came from some sort of old video. To their left appears to be a concrete pad, and on top of it seems to be some sort of metallic object. Aside from this, there are no further identifying features in this photo. No age range, no location, no reference for height, not even confirmation that this person yeah, is alive. Sign. At all. Reverse searching this meme brings up a whole lot of nothing besides the fact that the earliest archived version of it came from a Blogspot post in 2016. It also seemed to be copied from another source as compression artifacts were present even on this image from nearly a decade ago. Thank you for the sub. Reverse searching the photo itself gives us more of the same. However, upon pivoting to Yandex, I did discover an interesting trend. There's a myriad of images of people lying in a field, appearing limp, much like the photo we're investigating, though they're all labeled with captions that appear mostly innocent. Russian youth having fun. Not all of This guy's all. tired of the sun. Hero okay. risks his life to save a dog, what have you. But where things really get funky is when we look at this one, in which we can see a body lying in a very similar manner as ours. Yo. I'm cool, cat. Thank you for the sub. Boy, that nigga dead. <laughs> Yo! There's no further context to this video aside from its title, which translates to Dying Swan, and there are no other relevant videos on their channel. Now, the reason I bring this up is because, out of context, this image looks just as haunting as ours. However, it appears to be nothing more than a screen grab from an old, obscure prank. I'm not saying that this image is something just as lighthearted. However, the possibility is there. 
I think they both so did. So where is this image from? And what's its context? How did this end up in a meme throughout the mid-2010s? And who created it? A meme throughout the These are the questions that have bothered me for nearly a murderer three years created now. It to cover this it is up? where I need your help to figure this out. Nigga, you on your own. Who is the woman in the field? I appreciate you. Thank you. Tonight, you and I dove into five more of the darkest pieces of lost media I could find. Jeez. As we can say, there's no shortage of obscure, disturbing content like this, and I hope you all enjoyed this trip down the dark side of the internet as much as I enjoyed making it. If you have any suggestions for future entries for this series, feel free to submit them at dtfaisubmissions at gmail.com. Thank you guys so much for watching. My I'll see God. you in the next one. I love you all. <laughs> love you too, man. Yo. And good night. Aww. <laughs>